open this. You put the paper in the tray here. And then you clip it in. There we go. The app on this thing kind of sucks. Okay, photos. Okay, so uh, let's see. Okay, hopefully this works. Welcome to Printvember. We'll workshop that. Uh, but basically, I just wanted to put some more focus on prints this month. I wanted to make sure you knew that if you go to willmalone.com, you can buy prints from some of the work that you see here on this YouTube channel and some that you haven't seen on this YouTube channel that I did before, believe it or not, I've been doing this before Double Negative existed. But I've got a new batch of stuff I'm about to put up and I will keep you apprised of all that going forward. But today I wanted to talk about a series, a series I did about a year and a half ago, really kind of in the early stages of Double Negative. So I'm out here shooting the first set of photos um, in South Carolina. And then I'll run this roll again and shoot photos in New York City. So yeah, we'll see. These, these are kind of random double exposures, basically. Oh yeah, that's cool. That'll be cool. This series started as an experiment with 35 millimeter film. And you don't see me shoot a lot of 35 millimeter film on this channel, uh, at least for the past year, because I've been deep in Polaroid film because I'm doing a Polaroid 365 project and that has just sucked all my resources dry. But at the beginning of this double negative experiment, I did a series that was also an experiment. Let's just call everything an experiment, like America. I'll leave that up to you to tell me whether it's a successful experiment or not. But basically I wanted to do double exposures in two different places. At the time with the digital gear I had, I couldn't really do that. Because, because the double exposure feature in, say, a Nikon will time out after a certain amount of time. Film is the best way to accomplish this. A double exposure where one photo is shot in one place and the second shot is in another. But the only feasible way to do that is to shoot a whole roll of film in one place and then shoot over it again in another place. So there was going to be a lot of randomness to this experiment. Here's the roll I just shot. It's got my little mark in there, so I gotta make sure to not let that get all rolled up. So the next roll I'm gonna shoot is this Kentmere stuff. And from what I've seen, if you push this stuff to ISO 800, it gets really grainy. And my vision for this series is actually to have more grain. Um, I push this to 800 ISO. Um, I'm not sure how grainy this uh, the Cine still gets, cause I've never, I don't think I've pushed that film that high, but I know this stuff seems to be pretty grainy and this stuff's pretty cheap it's like five bucks a roll or something like that which is awesome uh let's see it's hard to do this one-handed okay and i have to make sure to mark it and then There you go. Cool. And I now call this series New York City, South Carolina. I shot two rolls. So, you know, you got like 70 something shots. And I think a lot of, a good chunk of them do not work. That's just a fact, it's random. I don't know how these are gonna fit together, but I did get a solid set of images that I really love. And I wanna talk about them. I wanna show them to you.
let's talk about my favorite photo. And I have printed this large on aluminum. You've seen it before on this channel where I printed it huge on metal. And I shot these with my once trusty Nikon L35AF, which uh, broke almost immediately after this project ended. So this one's cool. I love this one because I was shooting just harsh shadows in the morning inside a pine tree forest. And just the way the shadows go this way and then lands with the World Trade Center in the middle, it just, it's so cool how this, you couldn't plan this. I couldn't plan for this. This was totally random. So the fact that any of these work is amazing. This one, uh, this woman is taking a picture of the, the Native American Museum kind of on Wall Street and it's just trees. It, it's, it's so cool. I just, I love it, all the shapes. And, and while these are random, they really inspired me to kind of like think at a different level with my double exposures and think about how things can go together. And I think the idea of urban city architecture going, being combined with rural is something cool, you know? I mean, we it's opposites together is always gonna be striking. And I think these are really, I think these turned out really neat. Because I shot it on Kentmere, because they're grainy, because they're abstract, I'm able to print them really large. And so I was able to print the World Trade Center one at like 40 by 25 or something on metal. And it's hanging in my office. I love this one. Cause I don't even, I think I was at like the sky bar of our hotel. And it, this is just like some dogwood flowers from actually my front yard. I wasn't even in the pine tree forest anymore. Just overlaying the buildings. And I just think it looks really striking and beautiful. And what I discovered is, and you know, photographers think they're like super special with everything. And so when I did this, I thought I'm a genius. No one's ever thought of this before. And what I learned shortly after shooting this is that there's a whole community of people that even will shoot over film rolls, mail it to somebody and let them shoot over it again. And like, there's a whole world of people who are doing this type of double exposure photography where they're just going random. They're just shooting over rolls of film multiple times. And so once again, proving that I'm not that creative and there are no new ideas under the sun as m much as I think I'm coming up with just new original ideas all the time. I love this one because this is just a huge pasture right here, perfectly in line with the stock exchange. And the way it cuts in right there, breaks apart, but you can still make out the New York Stock Exchange sign. Here's Wall Street again. Just people walking through the city, but the buildings turning into the woods and trees. There's something kind of crazy about it. And you know, there's a there's a type of photographer that especially exists in the film days that rely on post-processing in the darkroom. And I'm thinking of people like uh, Jerry Oolsman. Uh, I think I pronounced that correctly. I love his work. I have one of his photo books here. And he creates these dichotomies in photography, but he does it after the fact in the, in the dark room, which is crazy. So this kind of simulates that without having to rely on a dark room, because obviously I don't have a dark room here. I sent these off to, well, I sent these off to the dark room, but you know, the, the film lab, not the, you know, not, I, I just, I mailed these off and they developed it. I, I don't feel like film was just a means to an end. I wasn't really, embracing the process of film. So I've decided to put a limited batch of these prints on willmalone.com for purchase now. It's just gonna be a limited run of uh, some small prints of, of this series of my favorites. And uh, yeah, I hope you like them. Hope you enjoy them. If uh, you like them so much, you wanna get one for your house, then uh, I'd really appreciate it. We gotta get, that's how we keep the lights on here. This one specifically, and this one back here. There's another light. There's another light over here. And then there's one over here. So in order to keep all these lights on in my wooden office, I need to sell prints. So yeah, I don't know. I just wanted to go down a little walk down memory lane with this series that I will probably revisit in some form soon, but I've got to get out of this daily Polaroid thing before I start considering any other cool series like this one. So thanks for watching. You can follow me on Instagram at Will Malone. You can follow my Polaroid Instagram account at Everyday Instant. 
And hey, if you go on my website and you decide to buy a print, I really appreciate it. If you want to buy a print and you just can't swing it, no sweat. It just is what it is. Buying some random dude on YouTube's black and white prints in this economy, it's a pretty bold swing. So I, I understand if you can't. So if you can't buy a print, but you want to support me in some other way, make sure to hit that like button in these videos anytime you see it. And uh, I hear there's a notification bell you can click to be notified every time I post a video. Uh, hit that as well, I guess. I don't know where it is. I've never done that for anybody. But you guys are smart. I'm sure you know where it is. Thanks for watching, and I will see you soon.